From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello everyone from the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive. This is 8700 on DCTV 23. I'm Wes Talon. And I'm Colin Cash. Thanks for joining us. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners rolled back the property tax millage rate to accommodate for the increase in property values for 2017. The value of land in Douglas County has risen over the past year as the economy continues to improve. Of real property assessments by the Douglas County Appraisal Department, 8% of the properties in the county had no change in value, 10% had a decrease in value, and 82% had an increase in value. Pro <clears throat> property valuation procedures are established by the Georgia Department of Revenue and include such things as comparable sales in a neighborhood. The Gross Tax Digest is the total net assessed value of real property and personal property motor vehicles, timber, mobile homes, and heavy-duty equipment. From that digest are subtracted approved exemptions and forest land protection, and the result is the net tax digest. The net tax digest for Douglas County increased about 10.5%, which equals over $389 million in value. Residential properties composed 56% of the tax digest, commercial properties 26%, industrial properties 12%, with utilities, motor vehicles, conservation, agriculture, and other smaller categories completing the digest. State of Georgia law requires the millage rate to be rolled back for any increase in the new tax digest due to the rising property values or advertise and hold three public hearings on the increase in tax revenue even if the millage rate remains the same as the year before. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners rolled back the millage rate 0.499 mills to 10.768 mills. Any millage rate higher than 10.768 mills is considered by the state as a tax increase. The Douglas County Board of Education increased its tax millage rate and held the requisite three public hearings. Their millage rate for 2017 is 19.75 mills for the maintenance and operation of the school system and 1.2 mills for the bonded indebtedness of the school system. The Board of Education's total millage rate is 20.95 mills. City of Douglasville Mayor and Council also increased its tax levy by 4.38% over the rollback millage rate. So, county taxes should stay the same. School board taxes will go up, and City of Douglasville taxes will go up. Each year, flooding causes millions of dollars worth of damage to homes and businesses. Just recently, Houston, Texas had catastrophic flooding that caused billions of dollars in damage. It is estimated that only about 20% of Houston area residents have flood insurance, so the thousands of homes that have been flooded will have to be restored by the residents themselves without insurance assistance. Standard homeowners and commercial property policies do not cover flood losses, so the National Flood Insurance Program was created in 1968. This allowed property owners to purchase insurance from the United States government that covers certain losses from flooding. Standard homeowners insurance covers falling water, which is rain, but does not cover rising water, floodwaters, even though the falling water causes the rising water. So any property owner in Douglas County may purchase flood insurance for their property regardless of its location. The property does not have to lie within a floodplain to be eligible for insurance. Flood insurance is available through many local insurance agencies. So if you live atop Andy Mountain, you don't need flood insurance. Mm -hmm. But if there's a creek or a stream nearby to your home, please consider it, and because of county practices, it will cost you 15% less. Over the past year, an expansion of the existing Transco natural gas pipeline system has been under construction through the western part of Douglas County. The project consisted of 115 miles of new pipeline from Coweta County through to the city of Dalton. 
The project will increase new natural gas deliveries to counties all along its length, including Douglas County. Construction is now complete and the pipeline was successfully placed into service on August 1st. It is now providing enough natural gas to meet the daily needs of about 2 million homes in Georgia. Outdoor burning is still prohibited in Douglas County through September 30th. Air quality is an issue in the Atlanta metro area and Douglas County residents have the right at times to be concerned. To educate our residents and hopefully alleviate some worries, a link has now been placed on the county website so that citizens can get daily air quality reports from the Environmental Protection Division. The link has been included in hotspots on the website homepage with the Burn Permits Fire Index button. The county website is CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. We should all be concerned about our health. Air quality affects it, as does many other factors. I choose to get a flu shot every year and the vaccine will find its way into my arm up next on Issues and Answers. So please stay with me. I'm Wes Tallon. And I'm Colin Cash. And this is 8700 on DCTV 23. <laughs> Men in particular have this macho sense that if they do get the flu, they can just tough it out. But flu is a potentially dangerous virus that can send a totally healthy young man or woman to the emergency room within 48 hours. The flu can knock a person out of commission for days or even weeks. The vaccine isn't perfect, but it do and it doesn't guarantee 100% that you won't get the flu, but experts agree that it's far and away your best bet. Joining me today is my good friend Carla Ayers who's a registered nurse with the Cobb and Douglas Public Health and she's again going to help keep me safe during this flu season. Carla, thanks again for coming in. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. We were talking before we started taping. This has been probably five years that you have given me my flu shot. Yes, sir. And I have not gotten the flu in five years. Yay! That's, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty good on this. Uh, each year, CDC and health departments and all kind of figure out what they think is going to be the flu strains that are coming, and that's how they get all the, the flu vaccines. Correct. Correct. All, all those that, researchers. You know, all those and all that stuff, yeah, and everything. Are there any predictions for this flu season yet? There are not any predictions yet. There still is some sporadic flu happening here in Georgia. Um, there is a weekly bulletin that the CDC will email you. If you're interested, you can go to cdc.gov backslash flu or Google flu CDC and it'll take you to the page and they'll let you sign up. So anybody can uh, keep track of the flu. They send a map of the United States every week and you can see where the flu is happening and where it's not happening but as far as what's coming up they don't have anything happening quite yet okay but they've already developed the flu vaccine for this year they have and usually it's what we call the trivalent which usually covers three different strains correct but you were telling me before we, we went on the air that this year it may be everybody's going to get the quadrilent which is four. Correct, correct. Last year, uh, the most of the people who make flu vaccine, most of the manufacturers, began developing a quadrivalent vaccine. And that protects against two kinds of A and two kinds of B. Um, one of those A being the H1N1. Since 2009, all the flu vaccines have contained a strain of H1N1. Um, and so it'll protect two A's and two B's because there are more than just, it used to be two A's and one B. Yeah, and that was the tri. That was the tri. And now the quad is two A's and two B's. Correct. And the H1N1. Is one of those components. Is the nasty booker. Yes. That has caused all sorts of trouble. Right. Especially in the younger population. Yes. Okay. Now I'm past the golden age. So therefore, there is a flu vaccine for seniors. That's a little different? Uh, correct. It is called high-dose flu. 
Uh, there are different manufacturers, but it is strictly for those who are 65 and over. Sorry, I told on you. Um, and they... Uh, well, I said it was a golden you age. You did, you did. Just, yeah. And it has more antigen in that one because as we get older, our immune systems don't work as properly. And therefore, with the boost of antigen, our bodies will uh, fight it off and then it'll protect us if you do get exposed to the flu. Okay, I'm gonna get my shot today. Go ahead and start getting your things together, if you will. And once I get my shot, how long will it actually take to become effective inside my body? Right, it takes about two weeks. Okay, so we let encourage... me move my notes out of the way here. Keep so talking. So it takes about two weeks, and so we encourage everybody during flu season and all the time actually to just wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. That's gonna protect you against all kinds of things. But um, it does take about two weeks for antibodies to okay. get produced. Well, can you talk while you're doing this? I hope so. Okay, okay, we'll do this. <laughs> okay, it's not gonna hurt, I promise you. She's already done this to me for many, many years and you need to get it done. She has been taking care of me at the health department for all these years. I have not gotten the flu. So Carla, tell me who should get a flu shot. Everybody needs to get a flu shot if you're six months and over. Okay. Um, those with special underlying medical conditions need to get the flu vaccine, such as lung disease, heart disease. Um, if See, you, she's done, didn't hurt, didn't even know it was happening. If you um, are allergic to eggs, you want to talk with your doctor. Um, people who have an egg, egg allergy can get the flu shot because it just depends on what the eggs do to you. If it's a life-threatening egg allergy, you don't want to get it. But if okay. you just get an upset stomach or something, talk with your doctor and you may be able to get the flu shot that does contain eggs. There are a few out there that do not, are not made in egg products uh, for people who are allergic and need to get it. And then if you've had Guillain-Barre syndrome, um, and people who've had that know what that is, uh, then they also need to discuss with their provider about getting the flu shot. That's who shouldn't. But generally, every person six months and over should be getting a flu shot. Okay, now flu shots are available just about everywhere these days. I mean, you can get them at Kroger, you can get them at Walgreens, CVS, uh, Target, Publix. You know, I mean, it's just amazing. They also can walk into the health department. Yes, we have all the, the uh, formulations available and we are ready to get everybody. We take um, pretty much all major insurances now and so there would be no out-of-pocket cost. Oh, that's wonderful. Carla, thank you for taking care of me no again problem. this year. We appreciate you, Wes. You bet. See ya. I'll be back in a moment with more news, so please stay with me. I'm Wes Talon and this is DCTV 23. Welcome back. Qualifying has ended for seats on the City of Douglasville's Mayor and Council for 2017. Ward 1 Council Member Larry Yockey declined to run for re-election and his post will be filled by former Council Member Terry Miller, who qualified unopposed. Three other Council slots are up for election, Mike Miller in Ward 2 Post 1, LaShun Burdanley in Ward 3 Post 1, and Sam Davis in Ward 3 Post 2 all qualified for re-election with no opposition. This means that no election has to be held in the city of Douglasville on <laughs> November the 7th. No officials in Douglas County government are up for election this year, so enjoy your year without all those pesky roadside signs and campaign telephone calls. The Atlanta Regional WorkSource Mobile Career Lab is now scheduling visits to the Douglas County Courthouse to assist residents in their work search. The Mobile Career Lab, which looks like a large recreational vehicle, contains 12 computer workstations and staff to help residents in job searches, resume writing, and interview preparation. The free service is provided by the Atlanta Regional Commission, of which Douglas County is a member. The Mobile Career Lab will be at the courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive on the fourth Thursday of each month from 1.30 to 4 p.m. The third Douglas County Courthouse was built in 1896. It was the first courthouse of substantial construction, bricks and mortar. 
the first two courthouses were poorly built. All three were construction, constructed on Courthouse Square in downtown Douglasville, the site of the current 1958 Courthouse, Old Courthouse Museum. The 1896 courthouse burned in a spectacular fire on January 11, 1956, thought to be the result of faulty wiring and straight heart pine ceilings, floors, and framing that years of drying and the use of floor oils, which made for a very flammable subject. In the fire, many county records were lost, but recently, 10 pages of the original blueprints for the 1896 courthouse were recently found and have been rehydrated, cleaned, and restored as much as possible. The blueprints are 121 years old. The restored blueprints have now been digitally imaged for future use, and the restored blueprints themselves will be archived for preservation. Douglas County is not quite 150 years old, and that is young for a government. There are lifelong residents of this county whose parents or grandparents were alive when the county was incorporated in 1870. Just like the blueprints of the 1896 courthouse, they have stories that we want to hear. How they can contribute to the preservation of county history is the topic for newsmakers coming up next, so please stay with me. I'm Wes Tallon. And I'm Colin Cash. This is 8700 on DCTV 23. Lisa Land Cooper has been a paralegal and researcher, an elementary school teacher, a blogger, an author, a columnist, a curriculum designer, <laughs> and is now most widely known as an historian. <laughs> Did I get the whole list right? I there believe we go. so. <laughs> she authors <laughs> columns on local and regional history in the Douglas County Sentinel, has a keen interest in finding and preserving quickly disappearing Douglas County history. Lisa, thanks for joining me. Oh, Appreciate thanks this. for asking. You know I'm a history nut. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I love history, and uh, we're both interested deeply in Douglas County history. Right. Douglas County is only 147 years old. Mm -hmm. As far as counties go, that's young Yes. On, on the thing. How important is it that we now, here, 2017, that we find and grab hold of what history is out there? Well, it's always important. It was important 50 years ago. It was important 10 years ago. It's important now. It'll be important 70 years from now. It's always important. Um, for someone like me who, who researches, I'm constantly um, mourning the things that we lost that I don't have a picture of, I can't find a picture of. Um, and I'm always thinking currently what I need to get a picture of so that somebody doing my job 50 years from now will have it. It's always important. I hadn't thought about in, in quite what you just said there that getting a, a photograph now mm -hmm. for someone who is in the future 50 years from now in, in protecting that right. because history keeps changing. Right. History keeps going and, on. And think about how Douglas County keeps changing just in the time period we've lived in Douglas County. There's always things, situations where I'll get a picture of something, but I'll go, gee, I wish they had moved just a little to the left or a little to the right so I could have seen what was behind or in front of. So when I take pictures, I go around the whole building. <laughs> and take the whole thing. <laughs> take the whole thing. Well, I remember when I moved here in 1993, I saw bumper stickers all over everywhere that said, I survived Highway 5. Yes. I had no idea what that was at that time. Mm -hmm. I know now right. that it was, that's where the interstate ended mm -hmm. at Highway 5 going west toward Alabama for a number of years. Right. And then it dumped out on a little tiny two-lane road that then connected to Bankhead Highway. Right. And the traffic was horrible and then they were widening it, it all it, out. Right. And it wasn't always safe. It always, yeah, I, but I survived Highway 5. I don't right. know what on earth is that? <laughs> That's history. Exactly. So is that the kind of stuff we're looking for? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Anything. Anything. Um, it, it, 
people, a lot of times people will give me boxes of what they think is trash and they don't realize that I can go through those letters or bumper stickers or pictures and I can pick out and give the context behind it. Oh, this must have been when they were having the centennial. This must have been when so-and-so was president or this was when, you know, it, I can get the context to it. So what some people might think is trash, it's a historian's treasure and it's a, his, the historical record that we need to have for the county. Okay, if someone has a box of old letters, mm -hmm. box of old photographs, right? even if they don't know who's in them. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> and they bring them to the museum. Douglas County Museum of History and Art, right? What happens to them then? We get to go through the items and we get to determine the context and a lot of times we discover treasures that make someone like me jump up and, up and down. Um, one of the things that um, I had been looking for for years was a picture of the old pedestrian bridge that used to be across the railroad at oh, Bowden downtown. Street yeah, in downtown, downtown Douglasville. And I kept seeing snippets of the bridge but not the entire bridge. I had a description from one of the newspapers, but that was it. And when I was putting together one of my books, um, someone, Mike Garrett, came to me and said, I've got this picture, and he threw it out and gave it to me, and I jumped up and down, literally, because it was a picture of the entire bridge, and I was able to put that in my first book. Um, but it was definitive proof that that bridge was there and it was exactly as it was described. And, it, and it's no longer there and hasn't and been no, for a number since of... Since the 30s, 1930s. Yeah, since the 30s and yeah. all. And I just want to let y'all know that uh, Lisa is an author and she has written a couple of books which she has, has brought with you and I want to show you just the covers of those. They're available all over town. Um, and we normally don't promote things that are done by private citizens and all, but She's doing this to preserve our county's history, and she also serves on the board of our Tourism and History mm -hmm. Commission and also on the board of directors of the Museum, Museum. of History mm -hmm. and Art. So let's, let's talk about that for just okay. a second. Um, someone may bring in a shoebox full of things. Happens. They bring them into, <laughs> yeah, and we love it. Yeah. And they, they've got them, uh, it comes to the museum and Y'all are preserving them and everything else like that. What of these types of things are on display now at the museum? Oh gosh, we have so many things. Um, we have fun things like the um, um, lunchbox collection that people love to look at and go, I have that one, that's the one I had. And we've got grandparents who bring their, kid, their grandkids in and say, that's the one granny had, you know. And they're all metal, so um, they don't, have, make them like that anymore, no, so don't. that's always unusual. Um, but we also have collections from entire families. The Dorothy Edwards collection at the museum is an entire collection from one or two families that Dorothy Edwards was a member of, and she had a house museum in the 1970s in her house where people could go through. And at some point she decided to donate it to the museum, and it was our very first collection. And um, what I like about that collection is it spans several generations. And it's amazing to me that the family hung on to so many different things from so many different decades. I mean, we have Civil War items mm. up to 1950s in that room. Um, and it all belonged to one family. Another collection that is a favorite of mine is the Ephraim Prey collection. And Ephraim Prey was one of the very first settlers in Old Campbell County, which we were a part of prior to 1870. And in that collection, we have the violin he played, we have a pipe he smoked, we have pictures of him throughout his life that shows how he changed as he aged. He was one of our very first commissioners, and he was one of the men who pushed for Douglas County's formation. So it's just an interesting um, exhibit for me. It's one of the ones that I like. Another one that, that we didn't really intend on having in the beginning. I mean, it, what we, a museum can't say we want an exhi exhibit on this, this, and this, and it happened. 
we are at the mercy of the public, what the public brings into us. And early on, we began getting military uniforms. These are all uniforms that were worn by people who live right here in Douglas County. And it just keeps growing. And we love it because it's unique. Not every museum has as many pieces of military wear as we do. Um, all the way through Vietnam, and even I think we've recently gotten some things in from some of our most recent conflicts. And there's a story with each one. There's a story with each one. And we love it when we're able to get a picture of the gentleman who wore, or female who wore it, as well as where they went to school. We have one um, um, that we have there, lots of history and stories, the dog tags, everything mm. to go with the uniform. And it's just really neat to have that. Okay, well, Lisa, thank you so very much for coming in and telling us about it. She has uh, written two books, Every Now and Then, The Amazing Stories of, of Douglas County. And this one, Images of America, Douglasville. Many, many, many photographs in here. These are available locally. But we need what you have. If you have anything from your family, your ancestors, your attic, that you wish to donate, please visit the Museum of History and Art that's located at the old Douglas County Courthouse in downtown Douglasville. It's open Tuesdays through Saturdays, and they would love to see what you have and to meet you. I'll be back in a moment with more news, so please stay with me. I'm Wes Talon. This is 8700 on DCTV 23. Welcome back. It's September, and for over a decade, that has been September Saturday's festival at the Douglas County Courthouse. This year is the 15th edition, and it promises to be huge. September 23rd is Family Day, plus a jobs fair, plus the school expo. There'll be over 100 vendors and exhibitors on the grounds of the Douglas County Courthouse and about a dozen businesses and industries looking for employees. Schools in the Douglas County school system will have their own tents to show you what they are working on and ask for your support. September 30th is Heroes Day, plus the Touch a Truck experience. The vendors and exhibitors will be back, as well as equipment, vehicles, and trucks from public safety organizations, such as the Douglas County Fire and EMS Department, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and the City of Douglasville Police Department. Both Saturdays will feature concerts on the courthouse steps every 30 minutes, a food court, a free train ride, a carnival ride, rock climbing wall, and inflatables. The Flint Hill Masons will host a free computerized child ID program and Douglas County Animal Services will have pet adoptions on site. There will be a used book sale, free and confidential HIV testing, free vision screening, and lots of information on programs and services from which you can benefit. It's all free. Free admission, free parking, free shuttle, free features, and free concerts. It's all about community. So come join us at the 15th annual September Saturdays Festival at the Douglas County Courthouse. On Saturday, September 23rd and 30th, it will do you good. And that's the news for now from 8700. Thanks for joining us. I'm Wes Talon. And I'm Colin Cash. See you next time.